Hey YouTube, it's your girl Tatiana Joseph, aka Anna J, and I'm back with another video, and today's video is going to be a Q&A. As you can see, I'm talking a little fast, only because I have sinus issues, and for some reason when I talk a little faster, you can't really hear it, but the slower I talk, you can hear it. So like, maybe I'll talk fast in this video, I'm not really sure, sometimes I do talk fast, so... We'll see how that goes. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I did tell you guys to ask me some questions and you guys did. So I have my iPad here. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at the iPad because that's where all the questions are. And I do wanna make sure I get to all of them. You guys asked me some really good ones. Some of them, I was like, oh! But we're gonna get into it today. First and foremost, I just want to share that I really do appreciate everyone who follows me. I did delete my old Instagram, so this is a new page. And you guys have really been showing me a lot of love on this new page, and I'm slowly growing to where I wanna be. My goals have been set, and I'm about to reach them, y'all. So thank you, continue following me, continue subscribing to my channel, continue sharing my videos and my content. I really do love you guys, and I really do appreciate you guys. So we're gonna jump right into the questions. The first question says, when and why did you start YouTube? So I started YouTube in 2018. I started it when I was in high school. So when I started my YouTube channel, it was kind of different because that was something I wanted to do for like my young years, I wanna say. Like when I was in middle school, I always wanted to have a YouTube channel, but I never had the means to do it. At the time I did have an Android and the quality wasn't the best and things of that nature. And I didn't end up having an iPhone until like my junior year of high school really. So it was kind of like, why not just start a YouTube channel now that I have the iPhone that I've always been wanting. So even with me starting my page officially, I made it in 2017, but I didn't post until 2018. So it took me about a year to do that. And I wanna say like, after a while, I found it really hard for me to kind of like get my get the ball rolling because it was like whenever i would post and whenever i would see another youtuber's work i'm like i can't edit the same way i just really didn't know how to start so i would go on facebook i would go on youtube i would go on instagram i'll just follow a bunch of youtubers and i'll watch their page a lot of them didn't show you how to edit like how people do now those things were kind of rare back then so it was mainly like you have to figure it out yourself so now that people are actually posting how to edit, it's like, wow, when I needed y'all, when I first started my channel, I didn't have it. So yeah, that's when I started my channel, 2018, and I am so happy that I did start it. Why did I start the channel? I started the channel originally because I wanted to document my fashion journey, considering I was just about to go to college, and I kind of wanted you guys to get an inside scoop of everything that I was doing at school. However, at the time when I was posting, I felt a little insecure about the video, so all of the videos I had when I first, like really first started the channel are gone. There's only like a handful that are still there from 2018. Um, yeah, most of the videos I deleted, I was just really insecure. I wish I kept them or at least archived them so I could just, you know, make it public again. But unfortunately I deleted them. So all of those footage is gone. So now it's just me building my portfolio all over again with the newer videos that I've been posting. The second question, I really love this question. It says, how do you deal with fear or doubt? So I'm someone that has always been fearful, always been doubtful of my life, only because of insecurities. And I feel like now that I've matured and I've kind of grown as a person, I found God, a lot of things don't really bother me anymore or they don't necessarily have that huge impact of fear like it used to. Of course, us being human, we do experience and we feel fear a lot of times, but it's how you go about dealing with the fear that you are presented with. Some people, when they feel the fear, they fold. Other people, when they see the fear, they go 10 times harder. Me, I'm one of those people, I go 10 times harder. Whenever I feel fearful or doubtful, I pray, obviously, but at the same time, I make sure like I'm pushing myself so I don't feel the fear. I listen to a lot of songs also that motivate me, Christian songs, and I just meditate on them through worship. And that's how I kind of erase the fear and doubt. Of course, there's some times where I do feel very fearful, but I always have to remember who's my father and that's Jesus. So with that being said, that's how I do with my fear. I overcome the fear with God's love and I overcome the fear with the confidence that I have in myself now. So a lot of times when fear is presented to me, I'm just like, yeah, I'm not giving into that. I can do so much better. And that's what I do. How would you recommend getting started up in fashion? So my fashion journey was a little bit different only because 
I started out, well, for me, I feel like I started out late. I started out at like 17 years old. That's still young, but when I, I grew up loving fashion, so I should have already started like from, I was in elementary, but again, like I was so fearful my whole life and I just didn't know how to do things and I didn't want to ask questions. So it's kind of like, I was like, you know what? Now that I'm old enough, I can do the research. I can go to these places. I can talk to these people. If I got to DM a celebrity stylist or somebody in fashion, that's what I'm going to do to get the answers that I need. What I would suggest is just making sure you do all the research because fashion has so many things. You can be a designer, you can be a stylist, you can be a costume designer. You can just do so many different things. So fashion isn't limited to the one thing. There's so many things that you can do and accomplish. So what I would suggest, if somebody wants to start out in fashion, you just mainly have to do the research. And if you have the passion for it, then do it. But if you don't have a passion for fashion, it's gonna be really hard for you to feel comfortable in that space because it's so competitive and there's a lot of things that come with it, like people talking down on you, people not really supporting you, and people not always seeing your side of things. So the way you view fashion is not how someone else will view fashion. When's the skincare line dropping? So the skincare is dropping in April, so stay tuned. You guys will not know the exact date, but just know it's coming next month, so stay tuned. Make sure you follow my page, Anna J Skin. Turn on your post notifications so that you can get notified whenever I post or whenever I post the announcement of the official launch date, but April for sure of this year. What's your favorite brands to use on clients? So y'all know I'm a stylist, and what I normally like going, this is so crazy, I normally like shopping at Zara or H&M. Why? Because they're very affordable. Zara, not so much. H&M is very affordable. Zara, they have their moments. I normally go around the time where there's like some sales or if I have like a big deal, like the client's budget is really big. I like to shop at Zara because Zara has a lot of things. It has shoes, pants, tops. It even has like now cosmetics and different things like that. So I definitely like shopping at Zara because it's like a one-stop shop. Same thing with H&M. You can find everything right there. And maybe the only thing you won't find, probably a few pieces where I can go across the way to another store. So Zara and H&M are my favorite brands to use on people. A lot of my newer clients though, they really like shopping on Shein and Fashion Nova. So I have been getting a lot of pieces from there as well. But I would normally say like if I'm going in person, I would say H&M and Zara because you can find everything there and it's cheap. What's your favorite name brand? I have said this several times, but my favorite name brand is Steve Madden. I love Steve Madden, their purses, their shoes, Wow, to die for like literally if you look in my room majority of my purses and my shoes are steve madden and i need some more because they're always dropping and it's always fire and i feel like if you can't afford like bigger brands then you need to stick with the brands that are like in your local mall where you can actually afford steve madden is one of them i feel like their price point is really affordable so like if you're looking for something that's fashion forward and is cheap steve madden is the place to go to I would say Aldo as well, but at the same time, I feel like Aldo sometimes copies Steve Madden. I mean, a lot of brands copy each other, but Aldo really be trying to copy Steve Madden and I don't really like that. So yeah, Steve Madden. Pumps or wedges? Um, I feel like it really just depends on what I'm wearing. Sometimes a pump would really like elevate a look and then sometimes wedges would, but I would mainly say pumps because it always looks luxurious chic it looks expensive wedges on the other hand it's like it depends on the style of it that would determine like how the outfit will come out so pumps are definitely like a better option to be honest dresses or skirts neither i love pants but i've been trying to wear a lot more dresses and skirts so if i have to choose between a dress or a skirt i would say a skirt because i could freestyle a little bit better a dress maybe i mean it really depends because I've been trying to wear a lot of dresses and skirts now and I'm really into like the fitted longer look. So if you see me wearing a dress or a skirt, it's going to be fitted and it's going to be lengthy. Like it's going to be like to my ankles, if anything, or a little bit above. Now, if you see me wearing a shorter skirt or dress, it's probably because I really thought it was cute. But my really go to is like something that's really long and form fitting. How do you balance your business life and your life life? So... When it comes to business and my regular life, I feel like they both intertwine because my life revolves around my business because my business is fashion and content creating. So it's like, I really can't separate the two. It's just embedded in me, it's who I am. So my life life and my business life, that's my life like together. Maybe my time, how I prioritize my time is different. So if I want to create content, if I want to record videos, 
I set out certain times to actually do those things. But for the most part, like that's just my life. And I just make time for whatever I need to make time for. And when it's time to create, I create. When it's time to relax, I relax. When it's time to live, I live. And I try not to keep my life so focused on, I gotta get this out, I gotta get this out, to the point where I don't live. So I do like enjoying myself and I do like going out. So for the most part, my life is really chill because I do have that perfect balance because I make time for business and I make time for just leisure and going out. Next one, what keeps you consistent? How do you remain consistent? So I created a video that was about consistency and I basically explained how whenever you're like hit with a task or something, it's important for you to remain constant in how you do it, especially if you're in business, because a lot of people want to make sure if they're going to support you, they have a reason to support you. No one wants their time wasted. If you want to stay consistent, you have to discipline yourself and you have to be serious about yourself enough to know like if you want to accomplish something, you can't keep dropping the ball. So if you wanna create content, or if you wanna do makeup, or if you wanna be a stylist, or if you wanna be a doctor, you have to study, you have to be consistent in studying because then if you don't study, you're not gonna pass the class. If you don't put the work in, then where's the results? So really being consistent, it, ha it really depends on how serious you are about whatever it is that you wanna do. If you're serious enough, it'll get done and you'll remain consistent at it. What inspired you to start a business? So. My business was launched in 2017, but officially in 2018. I've always been into fashion and I always wanted my own clothing line. When I started out, I used to resell things. So I would buy things wholesale and then I would just resell it, different brands from different places. But what I found was I didn't really like it because it wasn't me, it didn't represent me as a person. So I ended up selling out everything and I went back to just styling full time. So instead of me having a clothing line, it turned into a styling business. Then the styling business, now I'm rebranding, get back to the clothing line. So when it came to starting the business, I always loved fashion, like I said, and I wanted to have something that represented me. So I launched something that I felt like represented me in the best way possible, especially at the time that I started it. And now I feel like it's growing into the right direction. So starting a business means like just being passionate about something and just launching it. If you're gonna be in it for the money, it will show, people will see that you don't put the effort in to make something look the best. So the quality isn't there, but you're always dropping stuff. And they know like, mm, it's not the best. Or they look at another brand that specializes in something and they're like, this brand is serious about themselves because they took the time to brand. Whereas maybe you were in it for the money and they can see that. So if you wanna start a business, I would suggest making sure you're passionate about it and it's something that you actually like and desire. What made you start doing YouTube? Um, I really wanted to showcase my personality and who I was. My personality is the same around my parents, it's the same around my peers, it's the same around anybody. Like literally, who you see on YouTube is who everyone else sees in my life. Like I'm very lively, I'm very fun, free spirit, I'm very bold. I do say a lot of things that may be like, Err. but it's just me being honest, I'm very honest trustworthy, loyal, and you can see that through my videos. Well, hopefully, you know, um, the way that I speak, how I carry myself, I just wanted to show the world me and just kind of give you guys an inside scoop in my life. And I feel like that's mainly why I started the YouTube. And so far, it's been going really great. I also want to showcase like my love for fashion and how I put things together, how I think, and just me being a young Christian and just having people come on the journey with me really. What is your long-term goal business-wise and branding-wise? So long-term goal, I do want to own a physical store, several of them, and I do want to make sure that I launch other businesses as well. I would like to be a serial entrepreneur. Right now, I have Tatiana Joseph and I have Anna J World, my clothing line and my styling services. But I do want to launch other things like my skincare coming out next month, NJ Skin, and eventually they're gonna, and eventually there's gonna be other businesses that come after it. I just want to, I just want to launch a lot of things that represent me in the best way possible. My love for fashion, my love for skincare, my love for wellness. Just making sure that people love themselves, take care of themselves, and dress themselves well. My long-term goal would be to have a physical store and also to go around the world showing people how to love on themselves. I also want to eventually be in Fashion Week. Um, 
I just have a lot of goals. I'm not sure if I should really share all of them per se, only because I do want to surprise the world. But that's just a little inside scoop on the things that I want to do. My long-term goals is set. I definitely have a plan for my businesses, for myself, and for my future family. And I'm just really excited for the world to see everything that I have to offer. So that was the Q&A. If you would like a part two to this video, just let me know in the comments section below. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, I will leave that in the description box below. Make sure you follow me. Stay tuned for my skincare line dropping next month. And thank you for watching this video, guys.